So I just wanted to make a quick video on how to fix the um, the wobble and the kind of looseness in the forend on the Remington Versamax shotgun. Um, obviously, it isn't a big issue, but that was one of my big complaints. It's a great running gun. Uh, I have absolutely zero issues with the operation of it. I just didn't care for the the kind of wiggle and and you know kind of uh, um, play and movement in the forend. Uh, I'm sure as you're aware, one of the things that you'll notice is, you know, at least on your stock forend, you can sit there and kind of shift it back and forth, and there's a little bit of play in that regard, and then there's gapping down here around the pistons, depending on how far over you push it. Now, obviously, you're not seeing it on mine because I fixed that, and one of the other big complaints that I definitely had was the gapping in the forend right here, when you go to grab the gun or hold it, there was obviously a lot of, you know, up and down play. You could you could squeeze it and you could feel it bottom out. Um, so I fixed a lot of those issues with just a couple of simple things. So taking this off here. So the first thing that I did that I just happened to run across it on one of the... Uh, forums online was to take one of these propane torches and what you'd want to do is you would want to heat up this middle section right down the middle in here and heat it up and what you do is you'd flex it in so and the best way that I did that was to flip this propane torch on start it and then I would get that flame as low as it would go Obviously, you may or may not be able to see that, but that's as low as it would go without going. And what I would do is, I would take it and hold it like this, and I would fan it. I wouldn't, I'd make sure the flame wasn't touching, but the tip would be right next to the plastic. And I'd fan back and forth in there, and I would just keep doing that over and over. And you don't want to leave the flame sitting in one spot, or the plastic will start to bubble. Now, once you start fanning it, it'll slowly but eventually heat up, and I would at least heat it up until it almost felt too hot to the touch on the back side of this forend. And then from there, what I would do is, is I would take it, and I would flex. I'd flex down here, but I'd flex around here. I'd take it, I'd flex it real hard, and I'd brace it between my knees if I needed to, to really get it to flex. And I'd do that for about a minute or two, until I could feel the back of this start to cool down. And then what I would do is, is I would go in the kitchen and I'd turn the cool water on and I would flex it the way I wanted it and I'd run cool water right down the middle and out of it. And then once that, once that plastic had cooled, what I would do is I'd wipe it clean and then I would take it and I'd slip it back down around my shotgun until I got the proper fit that I wanted. So, as you can see, and I'll show you a close-up, there, there isn't any gapping down here anymore. There isn't any gapping around here. There isn't any gapping. You don't really start to see any gapping until you get up to right around about this area. Now, obviously, you could try to fix that if you wanted to. I didn't want to heat up that section. But after heating it up and doing that several times... I was able to, and it took, it probably took about a dozen, a dozen times of heating it up, flexing it, cooling it, heating it up, flexing it, cooling it, but I eventually got it to fit, and once I got that, it's a lot more snugger now. There isn't really any side-to-side -side play, which I absolutely hated. Now, one of the things to keep in mind when you do this, now that forend is going to fit a lot tighter. And what you'll do is when you finally when you finally get it where you want it, you'll find as you go to slip it on, it gets stuck on those pistons. And rather than try to power through on trying to get that down there, the easiest way to slip it, you know, once you've got that snug fit, is to drop it down to right about there. Drop it down to that little section right there. And then what you do is you squeeze the forend in, and that kind of flexes it over the pistons and then you can slip it down no problem and then you've got that snug fit in there and it's not e not hard to take it off or on or anything like that it's real simple now that's what I did to fix that issue now the final issue 
or yeah, the uh, not the final, but the I guess the second issue that I had was obviously that 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 play right here. And what I ended up doing was is I took a black furniture bumper that has got a height of about three millimeters. Because when you put the when you put the fore end on the gun and you tighten it down like it's supposed to be, there is supposed to be a little bit of a gap, and that's just how it's designed. So I didn't necessarily want to like uh, close up that gap, but I also didn't want to you know feel it bottoming out every time you know I went to squeeze the end of the you know the fore end. So what I did was is I found a black. I, I went online and I can put a uh, link in the uh, description of this video. Uh, for the exact product that I bought, but I bought this black furniture bumper and I just took some I took some uh, Alcohol I cleaned out the forend and then I put that the gap between here and the tip of this That's about three three millimeters right there And that's that's all you need and when you put it like that what will happen is is it'll slip down and it'll rest right up against this section of the gun so you've got that furniture bumper completely centered on this so that there's no, you know, it's you got full contact and it's not bottoming, bottoming out or anything like that. And that kind of fixes the play there. The final thing you want to do too, um, now obviously as you see, I don't have the little gripper teeth coming out of the top of my magazine. And the reason is because I switched out my magazine tube for one that didn't have dimples so that I could put the extension on. But if you still have the stock magazine, which you probably do, you can call Remington and they have got an upgraded, they've got an upgraded piece, the magazine retainer, the thing with the teeth coming out. They've got an upgraded piece for that and they've got an upgraded uh, magazine cap, this right here. And, and looking at it, you wouldn't know that there's any difference, but if you call up Remington, give them your model number, you know, they should be able to look up and see that, oh yeah, we need to send you the updated parts. It doesn't cost you a dime. Now, with that in mind, though, the final thing that you need to do that really kind of helps helps bring this all together in, in terms of not having any slop is when you slip it on there, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to pull down. You're going to want to pull down on that forend, pull down on it real tight, and you're going to put that magazine cap on, and you're going to crank it real tight and make sure that it's on there. Now, one of the things that I did... Um, to kind of keep an eye to make sure that things aren't loosening up is I took a marker and I put a little silver dot now you'll see like a little you'll see a little line in the the fore end in the plastic uh, just from the design I you know the mold or whatever and I put a little silver dot right up on the fore end cap where this is at so that I know every time I go to crank it back down and, and I hit the exact same spot every time and then if I'm shooting and this starts backing off, I'll know exactly whether or not, you know, how much this is loosened up. I don't have to go, okay, well let me crank it and see. I just have to take a look. Now obviously, as you shoot, it will back off a tiny bit and I've noticed that. It will, it will back off a tiny bit, but if it backs off quite a bit, you know, you'll be able to see that. And obviously, you know, with it on the bottom here, nobody's going to see that. Now the final thing I did to fix the forend, although you don't have to do this, and this has nothing to do with the wobble, it just kind of kind of makes it cleaner and makes it look nicer, is there's just a little bit of excess material right on the right on the uh, right on the uh, the top here. What I did was is I took an X-Acto knife and just real real carefully I just worked it back and forth. And shaved all that excess off just to kind of kind of give it a smoother look and then it and then even when it you know butts up against the gun that excess material doesn't catch the light and, and make it look like there's actually more of a gap than there is I mean there is no gap but that excess material would kind of create the illusion of it and I didn't care for it but again it's nothing that you got to worry about but and like I said uh, if you uh, if you get the if you tighten up the um, Four end by heating it up and squeezing it together and putting that little furniture bumper on there. Once that's all said and done, you know there is no there is no real play or anything like that. You know it's 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 real rock solid. I mean you can see me you can see me squeezing that there and that's not flexing in. It's real. It's got a real solid feel. You know this is a great gun. The four end just 
is loose and kind of feels a little shitty. And I definitely is something that, you know, makes people a little apprehensive. Now, obviously, you know, for as much as this gun is, yeah, it is kind of crap that you're having to, you know, go out and buy a $15 propane torch and I guess uh, 10 bucks worth of furniture bumpers. But you know what? The gun runs like a million bucks. It runs like a Ferrari. The end just looks like the paint job on an old, you know, shitty Pinto. So with uh, these fixes, it definitely helps the gun feel like a million bucks as well as run like a million bucks. Obviously, it does nothing for the performance, but it does make the gun feel a lot better to uh, hold and maneuver. So I couldn't find anything really helpful online myself. I, I had to find it, and I just found it in very obscure forums where it was somebody made one comment, and that was it. And I think some other people had mentioned about taking pieces of credit card and gluing it on the left and right side to help with the wobble. But I happened to find one picture and one guy's comment, one guy saying to heat it up, another guy talking about using a furniture bumper. And, you know, after doing all of those things together, it just made the gun, you know, the forend on it a hell of a lot nicer. So hopefully this video helps for anybody that's looking to get a Remington Versamax. You know, maybe they just don't care for the feel of the forend, but they do like the gun overall. And hopefully this will help you clean up your gun. So with that being said, I hope this works for you.